Well, howdy do, says I to you. I'm Kelly. Welcome to the episode all about the Red Special trim and the installation that I did in my guitar. I installed mine from the back instead of the top, which is a bit different because all the information you're going to find about the Red Special trim is going to be regarding how to install it in a Red Special replica that, that you would build. Um, I was interested in it for other reasons. I thought it was a good design, and maybe I'd be able to install it from the back side instead of from the top, keeping the top cleaner looking, not have a plate um, hiding it. So I set out to design it so that I could mount it from the back. Now, really, the big question is, is the red special trim for you? Why bother watching this video if you're not going to use it? Because um, I'm going to kind of go into a bit of depth on it, and it'll get a little bit boring if you're not into this kind of thing. So let's dive into it. How do you like to use a tremolo? Um, what are your favorite trims? I kind of break it down into two trim designs. One is the Bigsby, which is a very popular unit made popular by uh, by great players like uh, uh, Brian Setzer, Mike Campbell, Bernard Butler. They've used the Bigsby to make great artistic statements. The next would be the, uh, the Fender design for the Stratocaster, which they call the synchronized tremolo. Great players such as Jeff Beck, the late Mike Caswell, and Steve Lukather have used the, the uh, Strat design to make some pretty awesome music as well. The performance of the Bigsby tends to be more about smooth, where the beginning of the dive is almost imperceptible, and it's you kind of float around a chord or a note with a, a very gentle uh, vibrato. Um, it takes a lot more movement of the bar to change the pitch. It's kind of like um, like driving a Bentley or a or a Rolls Royce, where it's it's all about comfort and and smoothness. The Strat's performance is much more quick on the dive. There's nothing vague about when you start to move that bar. Um, you can move it, you can get some extreme dives with the Strat bar in a short space of movement. Um, the Strat is more like driving a Ferrari, you know, very quick to turn. Um, so which is for you? What is the Red Special more like? Is it more like the Bigsby or more like the Strat or is it in between? That's what I'm here to tell you. It's, I think most people who play the Red Special would agree with me that it is much more like a Stratocaster. It's a, it's, it's a nice quick dive. It's not a spongy, slow, rolling kind of smooth. Uh, it is actually very smooth, but it's, it's more like a Strat. Um, it's hard to explain. It's not exactly like a Strat, but if you're happy with a Strat, you'll be you'll be happy with the the uh, the Red Special. If you're more of a big speed person, you might struggle with the Red Special and think it's just not quite my cup of tea. So now you know what you're getting into. So if you want to go forward and build a guitar with a Red Special trim, then um, follow me through the process. In my case, I am not building it for a Red Special guitar. I'm taking it out of that environment and putting in an, uh, a completely different design. Um, this video is going to go into how to do that and the crazy amount of, of uh, things that happened in the process of making it happen. Learn from my mistakes. <laughs> I got it to work and it worked great, but there were a lot of, it was a bumpy road. One more thing, it's not always the movement of the bar downward, 
or the trim and the dive features of a of a trim system. But there's the pulling up. There's the uh, players like Jeff Beck and uh, Caswell and Lukather. They'll tend to hammer on the. Uh, they'll do all kinds of things like like palm hammering on the on the back side of the bridge of a, of a strat bridge, which gives it a, a very unique effect or warbling where you you pluck the bar and it just it it, it quivers and makes a, a very nice sound. Um, the red special isn't such. If you need to have that, then the red special is probably not for you. You, you, you know, you can't you can't hit your hit your fist or your palm on the uh, on the backside of the bridge and make it do anything because there is no plate there to press against. Um, you can get a little bit of warble by by plucking the uh, uh, the bar, but not like on a on a strat. So I think uh, some of these players wouldn't like it for that. There's another big issue um, now. This well, this is one that. I didn't expect. I, I knew looking at the design that you couldn't do any palm hammering, and I was fine with that because if I want a guitar to do that, I got plenty. I was mainly wanting that um, strat-like dive. But there's something that I didn't expect. Um, I didn't realize how much I depend on the the bar pivoting on the bridge, like on a Stratocaster, right on the bridge is where the bar pivots. On a Bigsby or a Jazzmaster or the Gibson Maestro, where the bar pivots on a Red Special is more like on a Bigsby or uh, some of these other units. It's not like a Strat, so it's, it's more out of the way. And that can be a good thing if you don't want it in the way. For me, I typically just hook my finger, my my pinky around the bar to pull it into position. If I if I haven't been using it, if I've been strumming or whatever, and I feel like uh, grabbing the bar, I just subconsciously loop my pinky under it. It's it's in my hand. Um, I've been finding with a red special, I have to kind of search. Oh, it's way back here, <laughs> and pick it up and start using it. That is an issue, or it may be an issue. It may not be an issue for you. So what drove my search that ultimately led me to the Red Special? I was looking for a system that did not require routing wood away in the vicinity of the bridge. The Strat system requires a large area routed out on the back side of the guitar to accommodate the springs. It also requires routing through the guitar entirely to accommodate the block. I was looking for a system that didn't require so much wood routed away in that area of the guitar. My original idea was to use a Skyway. Uh, the Skyway trim is an excellent trim. I have one on my uh, on my John Sir guitar. This. There is no wood route, routed away in the back of the guitar. It has a shallow route to accommodate its installation. In my opinion, nothing matches it for transferring the vibration of the strings into the body. There is so much resonance with this system. If I could get the Skyway, it would be the only trim I use on all my guitars. It's easy to change strings, and it looks great. So I had to find an alternative. Every once in a while, a new trim design comes comes along, and and I'll try them, um, but it wasn't until the Red Special design, I took a close look at that, and I thought, well, that might meet my criteria. So like I said at the beginning of the video, before now, there's really not been much in the way of sources that, that detail how you can use a Red Special in um, situations outside of the Red Special guitar. You can learn a lot about the Red Special trim if you go to forums that are set up for people who are building replicas of the Red Special guitar. But in those forums, you're mainly going to learn how to use it in, in that application. This takes you outside of that world. My goal here is to bring the Red Special out into the world outside of the Red Special guitar.
so that it can be used by luthiers in other applications. So it took a bit of redesigning to get it to work. Um, I wanted to go with with a uh, I wanted to go with a roller style uh, bridge like Brian May did. Just if that worked for him, I'll give that a go. Uh, the one that I chose was the um, was the the Shaler roller bridge. What's different about it than what Brian used? Brian's bridge was one he designed, and it uh, it fit very flat, very low. It is one that he made himself, that when he designed it himself, and it was very close to the top of the guitar. And I prefer bridges that are close to the top of the guitar. So the Shaler bridge I'm using is quite a bit higher off of the top surface of the guitar than the, uh, the one that Brian May designed. Let me show you how this whole system works on the blackboard. So the way it works is this. There is a plate of metal that the that has a knife edge on one end and it's fastened to the body of the guitar within the guitar and that's covered with a cap of wood. This pivot block has a V groove in it and it pivots on the knife edge of this plate of metal. The strings are pulling in this direction over the bridge towards the nut. This is the uh, ball end of the string. The pivot action is off of this pivot point and the tension that the, str the string is pulling on this block is countered by this spring here. The spring is pressing against the block and against the head of this bolt, which goes through an opening in this block and into a block that's buried inside the guitar. It's a very good design. I mean, this is what Brian came up with when he was, what, 14 or 16 years old with his dad. So, yeah, and it works really well. Um, his bridge is a, is a roller-style bridge, and it's sitting on top of the body. It's pretty low. So the angle of this string, the let's just... the So the brake angle of this string from the, uh, the roller saddle to the uh, anchor point on this pivot uh, block is not too far off of the uh, not too far off of being parallel to the top of the guitar. That's great. And it works out well. The problem is my guitar has the uh, has the Shaler bridge with the roller saddles. In order for it to work and adjust, it's higher off of the body of the guitar. So, what I have is more like this. Here's the roller. Here's the saddle. Oh, well, that's awful. And there's an adjustment system. And now, for me, what I've got, what I'm up against is now this string is going up here. Now this angle is greater, and the pivot point of this just doesn't work out well because it's not ideal. What you want is for this to be perpendicular to the break angle of the string, like that. So, the cool thing is uh, there's a design out there. I don't know who came up with it, but um, I had the version that I bought from RS, uh, from RS Conversions or rsconversions.com. Uh, they do a really good job. And they've changed this design. It doesn't function any different. They just made it a little better in some ways. They've combined this block and this plate by going like this. So now all you have to do is route your guitar body out. So this is the piece of wood and uh, this plate 
is like this. There's a, the knife edge is still there. And this piece of metal is threaded. So this bolt screws into this piece of metal. This is, let's just call this a block, uh, the pivot block. Or no, that's the, that's the pivoting block. This is the knife edge block. The knife edge block is, is held in place by three screws. That screw in into the body. So now you have one piece with a knife edge that serves the purpose of of having a threaded area for this of anchoring this bolt and serving as a knife edge here. But it has another advantage that I found works perfect for me. Is because I don't have a plate here, if this were a plate and I wanted to angle this whole whole assembly. The plate would be sticking up here, above the level of the guitar top. You can't make that work. So, but you can make this work. All you got to do is grind this edge back a little bit, remove a little there, and just tilt this whole assembly back so that, so that this mounts at an angle. Now this will be at an angle. This whole thing, this whole, the whole works does this number. And so now you've got your your uh, your pivoting block perpendicular to the string. And it works. It works great. So um yeah. Anyway, I uh about a week ago I I took the uh guitar apart so I could uh, put a finish on it. It's looking good. But with it apart, I can't show you here. But before I took it apart, I uh, I took the back plate off and filmed a few things about how it works. And uh, let's go back in time to that video. And uh, so let's go out to the garage. Okay. The tremolo. With the back taken off. Here's the back. It's a printed circuit board sheet of fiberglass and copper with uh, wanted to strengthen the the wood so in case it in case it would warp. And uh, here's the tremolo. I originally made this cavity much bigger because I didn't know how much room I would need for these springs. Um, uh, as it turned out, I was able to close this off, which I was very happy because uh, it gave me more more for the end pin to screw into, strengthen this. That was good. I ended up having to add some some more support in there. This is the block that the uh, the knife edge piece. There's a knife edge on this that, that this block pivots on. The the knife edge of this. These screw into into there. Would not have to have a separate block that screwed in like that if I was okay with having holes here and here to install these with. So um, I could have just um, screwed into the wood uh, and, it, and, and had access to these, or to making those holes. Um, I have another idea that I'll, I'll do on my, my neck through guitar. So that's that. The original tremolo had um, 
had a different bar on it that um, was the, uh, the Brian May design. And it, it had a nut that was down here, so that's why this is so much bigger than what you, what you see there. It was very fussy. Once you got a good tension where, where this was exactly the way you wanted it, it would actually loosen up or tighten up, and you could never get it quite right. That's just there to hold it open. It sits in there like this. I even um, give myself a, uh, a dimension for um, measuring that distance. So, so this screws into This knife edge. little bit banged up. I'm not going to bother taking these out, but they just press in. The bar presses into here like this. And I want something to be able to adjust the tension. So with this in here, I can I can uh, use an Allen wrench to to get to the adjustment of this grub screw that that's that's going into here. Um, but the way I made that is I drilled from, from this end at an angle, at, at this angle, because of course it's gonna be easier. Uh, I actually filed a notch there so the drill could take, uh, could take it. Uh, drilled the hole and then tapped it from uh, McMaster Car is where I ordered this. And see, just a little, little thing. So you can see on this side, I did it on both sides. I screw it backwards all the way, all the way through, pull it back and then let it creep forward and tighten down onto there. And then there's this. See? rsconversions.com They do a really good job. Um, I filed the top down some, but there was, RS Conversions does give you a center line that, that can really help when, uh, when installing this. So. So, 
These holes are just uh, there to clear to clear this so that when you screw in, it goes through without obstruction. And of course, this mounts to there. There it is. That's how it sits in the body. Of course, the screw in there. So, that's how that works. Because, because of how thin you have to be in here, I would not recommend using basswood. This was a mistake. It was so thin that, um, well, of course, I, I had to make the mistake of, of making my contour a little too close here, and it, it, it caused a problem right here because that got really thin. Ended up having to support. Um, it's actually cracked. There's a there's a crack in this area. Where actually this piece came off, and I had to glue it back in. And luckily, you can barely tell. Uh, so I ended up supporting. It turned out I did not need as much um, space as I thought I would. Um, I had no idea what I was going to be up against as far as how how far those, uh, these had to be uh, in or out. And it turned out that I did not need all this extra space, so I ended up closing it with, uh, with this piece of sugar maple, whatever, um, which gave me more support for, this, for the end screw, or for the, for the uh, end pin, for the, the strap pin. Um, because I made it so thin, at one point, so this this was the first th problem to appear because this shape is is that is that arc. So I went through there and ended up patching that and and putting this this piece of maple here. But then when I put the block in and I started to tighten it up, I saw some flexing here. And um, so I, I figured I would uh, um, take a chisel and kind of cut away a little material there just to give me some room to stop the flex. Well, the chisel went completely through the body. And I ended up, uh, ended up uh, just filling this area with super glue and then uh, taking a block of wood and pressing it down and then spraying um, the accelerator on it to um, to do the job right and it and it worked this is actually pretty pretty strong but i would not really put much more pressure than that on it um, i would recommend if you're ever going to use to do this Use a real hard piece of uh, wood and something not too porous because you don't want it to crack or uh, or go through. I would use I would use rock hard maple. I would use the uh, the sugar maple. I went with the shaler because it was a roller saddle design, and uh, I was trying to be true to what Brian May was using on the Brian May Red Special. He's using um, uh, a roller saddle system but one he made himself this guitar stays in tune really well this uh, this bridge system really works for for uh for keeping the guitar in tune i like it so now you see how it works that's it i'm gonna leave a drawing on the screen so you can uh, pause it and um, and do a screenshot if you want it's a mechanical drawing that improves upon my design. It's only a little bit better because now I know how much play I have in the adjustment of that uh, that bolt for those those springs. 
So look at this drawing and make adjustments to, uh, to, to suit your needs. Use it as a guide to plan your own design. You may do things completely different, but this gives you some information you can start with. It gives you some vital dimensions as far as what you actually need. You know, you need to have, uh, you're not going to be able to afford to have much more than 70 thousandths of an inch uh, thick top above that, um, that pivoting edge, that knife edge. Uh, you're going to need to have a certain dimension for how, how much area you need to fit that spring. So how far can it, how far can it go back on the lighter gauge strings? You're going to have a longer distance. The, um, uh, uh, to count, to counter the, to counter the pull of heavier gauge strings, is the, the, the spring is going to be, uh, adjusted shorter. So keep that in mind, but you've got something to work with now and, uh, Good luck. It's fun. You'll be able to do it. Anyway, all righty then. <laughs>